Hi guys, my name is Bree, and I'm going to teach you how to learn to do an aerial in seven easy steps at home during quarantine. Normally we have gyms where we have people to spot us, we have mats, we have different tools that we can use to learn our skills. I took all of the drills that you can do at home by yourself without anyone and I'm putting them in this video for you so you can learn your aerial during this quarantine. How awesome would it be if you could go back to practice in July, August, hopefully not August, whenever it is, and be like, hey coach, look, aerial, boom. Let's do that. You have this time at home, get your aerial. I have it broken down into seven steps, or in gymnastics, we call them progressions. Basically, you can't move on to step two until you can do step one. Think about pirouettes. You can't move on and try to learn a triple pirouette until you at least have a single. That's what these steps are. Once you master step one, you can move on to step two. Once you master step two, you can move on to step three. So I'm gonna take you through each of those progressions as well as drills attached to each progression to help you accomplish that step. These are broken down for beginner through advanced. So if you are very, very beginner, start with step one, learn it and move forward. If you're more intermediate or advanced, you might be able to skip step one, step two, step three, step four, and go straight to step five, maybe even step six or step seven. So start wherever you are, but know that I'm breaking it down for every level. Let's do it. Starting with step one. Step one is simply being able to hold a handstand on the wall for five seconds. This is important because to get an aerial cartwheel, you need to learn how to do a cartwheel. To be able to do a cartwheel, you need to be able to hold yourself upside down. So step one, progression number one, is holding a handstand on the wall for five seconds. If you already can do this perfect, move on to step two. Fast forward. Handstand on the wall for five seconds. I'll show you real quick what that looks like. Arms up, kick it up. One, two, three, four, five and come down. Once you complete that skill, you've shown that you can hold your body weight upside down and move on to step two. If you're still working on being able to hold a handstand for five seconds, I have some drills for you. First one, in a lunge, all you're going to do, lean forward and lift your back leg and go up and down. Then return back to that lunge. From here, up and down. Another drill, second drill that you can do, once you can do this, going from your lunge and just kicking up a little bit, what I want you to do is clap your feet. So from here, go kick up, clap your feet, and go back down. Work that until you can get your feet higher and higher and higher. Your second one might be here. And then your third one all the way to the top. Helps get you comfortable being upside down. It builds up that strength to be able to hold your weight while you're upside down. Next drill, triangle push-ups. This builds up the shoulder and back and arm strength to be able to hold yourself upside down. Make a triangle with your body. And then you'll bend your arms to lower the top of your head to the floor. From here, lower it down and back up. Lower it down and back up. That'll help you build that strength to be able to hold that handstand. Step two is doing a cartwheel. You're here to here. If you have that down, fast forward, go to step three. If you're working on that cartwheel, here are some drills that you can do to help you get there. In this cartwheel, we do what are called T hands. So if you're a righty, right hand like a stop sign, left hand here to make a T. If you're a lefty, left hand for a stop sign, right hand to make a T. This is the position your hands are in for the cartwheel. So practice this in a handstand, just kicking up for a second. And I'm just going to kick up and come down. Yes, this is the first drill. Do that 10 times, three times. So do 10 of them. Take a break, do 10 of them. Take a break, do 10 of them. Next step for trying to get your cartwheel, a drill that you can do at home, outside in your grass, wherever you want, is rotating your body down. So you're starting this way. You're starting in your lunge. You have your hands ready to go into a T. 
and you're going to reach down and rotate so your chest goes towards the front to hit your T on the ground. Yes? So you're here, go down, rotate, hit. Some people in their aerials, they don't rotate and that's why they don't have it. And that's why it's important to go through each of these progressions. After you have your T and you have your rotation, you can start kicking that back leg. When you first start, it might be a small cartwheel and that's fine. So from your lunge, you have your T, reach it down and rotate and kick, land on the other side. From there, you'll kick harder and harder to get your legs higher and higher. So your next one might be here to land there. Something else that's important here, and it's very, very, very important to take into your aerial once you start doing your aerials, is making sure your hips start facing this way and end facing this way. The reason that is so important is because it protects your knees. From here, you can push. Landing here, you can absorb. If you land with your legs facing forward, all of that power goes sideways in your knees instead of down into the ground. So make sure you start with your hips square this way and you end with your hips square this way. Step three is a clasp hand cartwheel. So we have the cartwheel down. Now we need to get comfortable doing that cartwheel with smaller and smaller and smaller contact with the floor. So before we had two hands on the floor holding us upside down. Now we're going to clasp our fingers and have a smaller area that we're in contact with the floor. You're here, clasp your hands, make sure you're in a lunge, reach down and rotate to land here. If you're a lefty, reach down and rotate, land here. Once you have that, move on to step four. First step, you have your cartwheel down. So in your cartwheel, just try turning both hands in. Instead of the one hand in to make a T, do both hands in. So you're here, both hands in, to land. Both hands in, to land. Next step is bringing them closer. Do fingertip to fingertip. Both hands in to land. And then your last step would be actually clasping them, creating that smaller space where you're in contact with the floor to land. Step four. Once you have that handstand, you have that cartwheel, you have that clasp hand cartwheel, we're going to move on to the next step, creating an even smaller contact with the floor into a one hand cartwheel. So if you're a righty, I want you to do your right hand. If you're a lefty, I want you to do your left hand. We'll start with both arms up. Right hand touches the ground, left arm pulls back. This is important for your aerial. Pull back and land. If you've got that, move on to the next step. If you're working on this step, I have drills for you to progress to get there. First one is stacking your hands. So if putting that one hand down was really hard, try this. Take your left hand and stack it on top of your right hand. Stacking your left hand on top of your right hand. Do the cartwheel. It's a very, very small step forward from the clasp hand. So if you have the clasp hand, doing the left hand on top shouldn't be too hard. And then a small step forward from that, instead of having your left hand on top of your right hand, grab your wrist. You're here, lunge forward, kick it, and lift. Next step, grab your hip. So you do just have that one hand, grab your hip, Squeeze it, whatever you have to do, so that you don't put it down. And then that last step, we'll be pulling that left arm back like we do in an aerial. You're here, pull that left arm back, and land. Step five. Congrats to you, you did step one, two, three, four. You're on step five. Step five, you're gonna do a one hand cartwheel, but you're gonna do it with your other hand. So if you're a righty and you just cartwheeled on this hand, you're going to cartwheel on this hand. It can be scary because you're going towards the ground without anything there to catch you because this arm comes around and catches you after you've kind of been there for a second. It's okay if it's a little scary. Go for it. Work your way up to it, whatever you have to do. I'll demonstrate it. Both arms start up. If you're a righty, your right arm is going to swing and your left arm is going to go down. So you're here, right arm swings, 
left arm down to land. If you're a lefty, left arm swings, right arm down to land. Try that a few times. That one feels weird on your body if you've never done it before, so do it multiple times. Don't just do it once and be like, oh yeah, I'm good. No, if it feels weird or still feels awkward, do a bunch of them. Three sets of 10 is my go-to. Do it 10 times, take a break, 10 more, take a break, 10 more. Get it to feel good in your body and get it to feel natural in your body, and that's when you're ready to move on to that next step. Step six, running one hand cartwheel. So this is the step where we learn how to hurdle. Hurdling is the hop to get you into the aerial. Something important to know about the hurdle, and if you're someone who struggles with aerials, even if you're like, oh, I can do a hurdle, watch this because I'm gonna tell you some things that people do wrong in their hurdles. First, hurdles are not supposed to go up. They're supposed to take you out. So if your hurdle looks like this, you're wrong. It's not doing anything for your aerial, it's not giving you any power at all. Make sure your hurdles take you out. It should take you out and it should bring your body closer to the floor so that you have the power you need to push off the floor to get you where you need to be. Or if you're a righty, step with your left leg, hurdle on your right. Step left, hurdle to cartwheel. If you're a lefty, step on your right to hurdle with your left. Feet together, step up, and go. Some other things with hurdles, make sure your lunge is big. That's a part of you hurdling out and not up, but I know I have some girls, they hurdle, and then they step right here and try to aerial, but they have no power. That is so hard. The bigger this step is and the bigger this lunge is, right, lunge from the beginning, the more power you're gonna have to push. Another weird thing that I've seen girls do, and boys, is try to lunge off of the ball of their foot, don't do that, you're gonna lose power. Make sure your heel is down, and that's where your push is coming from. So, what this step, step six actually is, is a running one-hand cartwheel with your far hand. So, what we just did in step five, that far hand, one-hand cartwheel, we're doing that, but with a step hurdle into it. So, I did it, but I will demonstrate it again. If you're a righty, step left hurdle right. If you're here, go here. If you're a lefty, step right, hurdle left. If you're here, to go around. Yeah, and that's also me doing them kind of slow to make sure you can see. Normally, you do it faster and you'll have more power that way as well. So, as you're working up to that, some things you can do are hurdle into a two-hand cartwheel, hurdle into a clasp hand cartwheel, hurdle into a good side one-hand cartwheel, hurdle into your far hand one-hand cartwheel. Once you have that and it feels good in your body, you can move on to the next step. If you're doing that and it feels weird and it feels awkward and your legs are bent and your feet are flexed and it's all kinds of craziness, stay on this step for a little bit. Do all of those progressions up to it and then three sets of 10. 10 times, take a break, 10 times, take a break, 10 times until it feels good in your body. Step seven is actually doing the aerial. If you have done the progressions correctly, one, two, three, four, five, six, doing the aerial should be easy. If you have done all of the progressions correctly, because there is so much that you learn from those progressions that you need for the aerial. If you just hop in and you try to go straight for that aerial and you don't have proper cartwheel technique, it's going to be way, way harder for you to learn this aerial. So if you just skip through all of those other steps and came straight here and you're like, I just wanna learn how to do an aerial, but you don't have a cartwheel solid, rewind and watch those videos. Even if you think you have a cartwheel solid, rewind and watch those videos. We went over things as like where to twist, how to step, the lunge position. Moving on, step seven, the aerial. Once you have that running cartwheel with your far arm, all you have to do to land your aerial is pull both of your arms back. We practice pulling our left arm back here, right? And then we practice pulling our right arm back in step six. Now we're gonna pull both arms back. There is a difference, right? 
because before we were putting weight on our hands. In this, we're not putting weight on our hands. So how we get that extra lift into the air? Two things, push harder, kick harder. If you do those two things, you will land it. And to be honest, watching girls and boys get aerial sometimes, as long as they push hard enough, even if they don't kick hard enough, they'll land it. Or even if they don't push hard enough, but they kick hard enough, they land it. Obviously, the easiest way to do it is to push hard and kick hard to land it. I will show you one real quick. I want you to watch the push, watch the kick, watch. I will bring both of my arms back instead of just one. Yes, I know, easier said than done. So let me give you, just like I have in every other step, I show you what that step is and then I give you drills to get there. Back it up to our step six. If you're at the step, you have step six perfectly, which was the step hurdle, far arm to land. What I want you to do, I'm gonna let you put that hand down. If you're a righty, it's your left hand. I'm gonna let you put that left hand down, but later and later and later. Say the first time you put it down right away. I'm reaching for the ground right away. Yeah. This next time, I'm gonna give it a little bit more push with this leg, a little bit more kick with this leg, and I'm gonna wait an eighth of a second to put this hand down. Here, and wait, then put it down. Now, I'm gonna wait a half of a second longer to put it down, and I'm gonna push harder with this leg, and I'm gonna kick harder with this leg. That is key, push hard, kick hard. You'll get to a point where you'll realize you're putting your hand down at the same time as your foot. Once you get to that point, you can land your aerial. It is no longer a physical game, it's a mental game. So the next step, once you're pushing hard, kicking hard, waiting to put that hand down and then it goes down right at the same time as that foot, what I want you to do, obviously I want you to not put your hand down, but what's gonna help you not put your hand down is pull your chest up. As you're coming around, if you keep your chest down to put your hand down, you're gonna put your hand down. If as you come around to land, you pull your chest up, you're gonna land with your chest up and you won't be able to reach the ground. That's your next step. So first step, the sixth step in this, you have your left hand down. The next one, push harder, kick harder, put it down later, put it down later, put it down later. Once you get to the point where you're putting your hand down at the same time that your foot hits, pull your chest up and then you land it. Again, I know it's easier said than done, but this is what it comes down to. It comes down to you wanting the skill more than you are afraid of the skill. How bad do you want the skill? How afraid of the skill are you? As soon as you want it more than you're afraid of it, you're gonna keep your arms back, you're gonna pull your chest up and you're gonna land it. I promise you. Funny story, when I used to coach cheer, I had a girl and she was like, I wanna learn my aerial. I was like, great, sounds good. We don't really do aerials and cheer that much, but it's fun. And um, I told her, I said, you know, it's just a cartwheel, pull your arms back and push hard, kick hard and you'll land it. She's like, okay, awesome. So I asked her, I said, okay, you want me to spot you on the first one? And she's like, no coach, I'm just gonna go for it. Never tried an aerial cartwheel before in her life. Didn't want a spot. She's like, I know how to do a cartwheel. I just pull my arms back, right? Yes, Kayla, Kayla Reynolds, if you're watching, I miss you. You're and guys, this girl's fearless and she landed it her first try. Why? Because she had a solid underlying base of cartwheel technique. She knew how to do a cartwheel. She knew how to lunge out. She knew how to hurdle. She knew how to twist in a cartwheel. And because she had those basics and that foundation, she landed her aerial the first time she went for it. I am telling you the foundation and the basics are key, key, key. So if you skipped the video step one through seven, or sorry, one through six, go back and watch it. Because if there's something you're not doing right in your aerial, that means there's something you're not doing right in your cartwheel. Go fix it in your cartwheel 
and that will translate into your aerial. So many girls just try to jump straight into their aerial. I'm gonna learn how to do an aerial. I don't need to learn how to do a cartwheel. No, it's literally a cartwheel without hands. So, rant over. A quick science lesson that's gonna help you get your aerial faster. Any skill, but we're gonna use it for aerials. Find a video of someone doing an aerial and watch it over and over and over and over. Why? Because we have these things in our brains called mirror neurons. And what it is, it's motor neurons that go off when we see someone doing something. So if we see someone crying, the same neurons in our brain go off as if we were crying. That's why it makes us sad when we see people cry. Someone's laughing, the same neurons go off in our brain as if we were laughing. That's why it makes us feel like we wanna laugh. When you watch someone do an aerial, the same motor neurons go off in your brain as if you're doing an aerial. So when you watch someone do it, you're training your brain. And what controls your body? Your brain. If you want to get a skill, one big thing that you can do that a lot of people don't do is watch. Watch people who have the skill. And then the next step of that is visualizing it. You know what it looks like. Now close your eyes and visualize yourself doing that skill. As you watch it, imagine that that's you. Imagine that that's you in a video you're watching of yourself doing that aerial. This will help get your body where it needs to be. If you have any questions on that, let me know and I'm happy to answer them. Step eight. I know, you thought there were only seven. But here's the thing. Once you get your aerial, if you don't have your aerial yet, go back to step seven. Keep working on step seven. Don't move on yet. Step eight is a standing aerial. It's not impressive to run halfway across the stage and do an aerial. It's just not. You want it to be a surprise. Therefore, step eight is a standing aerial. The biggest difference between the running aerial and the standing aerial is just push harder, kick harder. Another thing that helps is making sure you have a big lunge. So if you're here and you try to just put your foot down and go to your aerial from here, you're not gonna have any power. Make sure this foot goes out so you can hit this lunge position, right? To pull it. Kick hard, push hard, lunge hard. I know my girl sometimes will be like, look, coach, standing aerial. No, no hop, no hop. If you hop, I see it coming and it's not as exciting. No hop, standing. Try to do it out of a skill. You're doing all of the cones. You're here, push and go. Try to do it out of choreography. Maybe you're here, here, and then all of a sudden, push and go. But the biggest thing again is no hop. Another thing you can do if you have the running but not the standing is do a power hurdle. So it's not a running aerial, but it does give you the hop. How you do a power hurdle is you start with your feet together, bend with your feet together, jump out, and do your aerial. But that's a step in between. If you're struggling with the standing but you have the running, work on the power hurdle aerial. That will help progress you to the standing aerial. Yeah, so I'll show you for real. Feet together, jump, push. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for practicing. Thank you for working on your art. Thank you for working on your skills. Use this video and get your aerial. Get your aerial during this quarantine because why not? You have nothing else to do. Normally you'd be at school for six hours. Take three of those hours, work on your aerial. Because again, why not? You have time, it's an awesome skill. If you wanna try out for college teams, if you're not on a college team yet, it's gonna be super helpful. If you're on a college team and you're watching this, I'm assuming maybe you need it for a certain routine or also you're just trying to be your best version of yourself, which is incredible. If you need more help, you need more drills, you have more questions, let me know and I am here to help and I am happy to do whatever I can do to help you reach your goals.